Any questions? How will Jefferson's absence affect Addison? Like, I'm thinking of like more targets in a bigger role, but also Jefferson might like, clear some space for him when he's on the field. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, each game's a little different. It remains to be seen, you know, if he gets all the targets that Jordan would get. But but uh, he's been doing doing a lot of good things for us and uh, running really good routes and being where he's supposed to be. He's a, he's a pro, uh, understands the game plan, understands the intent of the plays, uh, works hard in the run game. Uh, you know, not, not the biggest guy, but uh, a lot of it's – uh, effort in those types of things across the board with receivers. Uh, so he's doing a nice job in really all phases, and uh, you know I think it'll pay off for him. What do you think it will be like for some of these guys to play without Justin and the attention that he brings, kind of on a snap by snap basis? Well, I think you know no one is happy about not having Justin here, including the guys in that room. But I do think guys are excited about opportunities that they're going to get. And some guys uh, playing more than they've played, or even the guys that have been in there, uh, welcome those those types of opportunities to, to potentially be more featured. What are the key learning points for Addison in the run game? Like you mentioned, his size. Is it just kind of fundamentals in his base? Or how do you get him to block effectively? Yeah, I don't. I, I kind of heard something about maybe he's not doing well in the run game, and um, I, I really think that couldn't be farther from the truth. Uh, a lot of times, you know, even even if you're play side, kind of digging out a safety, uh, if you if you get in there, a, a lot of times you'll see just that presence. You get in there and you fit on the guy, and he has to play your block, and then the back can get through if, if we've done our job up front. So, um, you know, it's not always kill shots. It's not always, it's just it's just being in position. You know, you, you notice the, the bigger receivers that run in there and just smash somebody uh, more so. Uh, but being on your assignment, connecting to the block, obviously having a base, Tight, tight elbows, tight thumbs, you know, all the things that we would teach. But sometimes you got to go in there and throw your shoulder in there, and he's willing to do that. How much do you anticipate uh, sort of changing not just the actual maybe plays that you run without Jefferson, but just uh, the style of play offensively that you guys have over these four weeks or whatever it is going to be that he misses? I don't think our style will change per se. Um, you know the the explosive plays from Justin will we'll certainly miss, and and we hope some guys can take up some of that slack. But when you have an elite player, one of the one of the best in the league, we're we're going to miss some of that production, 100 percent. And you hope that um, other areas uh, of the game go well. The run, the run game hopefully, uh, you know, gets going as well. But uh, and then other guys have to have to step up and make the plays when they get the opportunity. I think you guys um, lead the league in passing attempts this year. Um, do you think that that's a function of just the way the games have gone? Do you, would you put that in the classification of kind of what the style of this offense is? Uh, the style leading the league in pa uh, pass attempts. I, I I would I wouldn't say that's what our style is. Uh, but sometimes it's it's the flow of the game. Sometimes we probably should have called more runs. Sometimes, um, you know, we don't we don't have a mindset that we're going to lead the league in attempts. I can I can tell you that. Um, and and when the run game is hitting, you know, and you feel there's a feel kind of of hey we're leaning on these guys. We're we're getting downhill. We're moving guys. Uh, that's when you tend to see more more runs uh, get dialed up. But uh, you know, each game plan, we want to have some sort of balance. You understand that uh, running the football is important. Just, if nothing else, from an aspect of the more times you drop back, uh, the more times that these pass rushers on the other side get an opportunity to, to do their thing and, and, and try to get your quarterback, and, and negative things can happen. Whereas you hope that less negative things are happening in the run game. Uh, as long as we're protecting the football.
kind of a general football question, but has it gotten harder to decipher pre-snap what the defenses are giving you over time? Uh, without question, over time, it's, uh, I think, uh, you know, this is 17 in the NFL for me. And uh, there, there were challenging teams, but uh, more teams now have gotten to more disguise of coverage, uh, more complicated pressures. I think I think most of the coordinators around the league understand how to attack protections, how to try to get you to set your center one direction and bring guys the other side, get two to your two to your back, uh, make you hot. Um, uh, just kind of the deceptive nature. Um, Man zone tells not giving you them. There's less and less teams that are showing you, hey, we're in man coverage uh, because they knew they were getting attacked. They're smart guys, and and they said, hey, we can't let them let them see all this stuff, or 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 they're going to run man beaters, you know, those types of things. So uh, it's gotten a lot a lot more complex. Um, not that it wasn't then, but uh, I also think offenses have adjusted in that way too, you know, it's just kind of a back and forth where I think both sides are, are feeling that way a little bit over time. Wes, um, you've had a lot of success kind of fourth downs when you, you know, needed to get a first down. Is there anything different about a set of fourth down plays going into a game? I mean, for obviously, you know, fans are really focusing in on that down. But just from a play calling or a schematic perspective, are, are those different in some way? Uh, generally, those fourth down calls are, uh, you want to have enough calls in your third down uh, menus. Um, you know, you kind of break up those D&Ds to make sure uh, you're kind of seeing what they do in each, each little section of third downs. And generally, those are in your third down menu. Um, I think where the calls can change a little bit more and just the mindset from the quarterback too when he's told, hey, you know, we've got two downs, uh, those opportunities when you're able to, to kind of let him know. And as the play caller, Kevin knows that, hey, uh, I've got two downs here, so maybe it is a, uh, you know, third and ten. Uh, maybe you call something different and necessarily always trying to make sure we get our 10 or else we're putting it away. Hey, Wes, with Garrett coming back, how do you look? Garrett looked really, really good. Went, got through the game uh, healthy and, and uh, communication uh, was really what, what we expect from him. Uh, those guys, you know, he is kind of a calming presence, I think, for, for everybody, including Kirk, just being in there and, and uh, his ownership of the system and the calls. So just on, on the fourth down thing, so Kirk kind of has a sense for in a given situation when it's third down that it could be a situation to go for it kind of going into that? Is that, is that how it works? Well, the, the times where you know that, hey, this is, you know, we're going to be four downs here or potentially four downs if we get into a fourth and manageable um, you might be more apt to take an underneath throw that's there, whereas, hey, I might, I might take a click longer and try to let something develop if it's a third and 10 or a 12 or something where I know that if we don't get it, we're, we're putting this thing away. How important at a time like this when you lose a player like Justin is it to have a guy like KJ who knows the system probably as well as he does and the positions as well as he does? Well, KJ has been a, a steady, steady presence since really since the moment we got here, and uh, you know he's had some big clutch moments in games where maybe he wasn't the featured guy, but when his number was called, he he made big plays. Uh, certainly going back to last year, our first year here, uh, but not just KJ. I think having uh, BP or Brandon Powell here. Um, and a guy who's ready to go into the game and make plays uh, at a moment's notice uh, kind of showed what he's all about. And uh, drafting a guy like Jordan uh, for these types of moments, I know, I know Jordan feels like he can be the featured guy, just like JJ 
has been for us. Um, you know, it, it's just the the whole. We have a really good receiver room. Um, Jalen Naylor is a guy that you know has been injured, but uh, when he comes back, we feel great about him. We we've got guys in the building. Nikhil Nikhil is up, um, and Nikhil's been doing some really good things. Kind of provides a different presence uh, as a 230 pound receiver. Um, so and he's got a skill set, you know, and it's just trying to trying to find the best way with JJ out to highlight each guy, put them in the right positions. Did you have a sense with Powell, even though when you were in Los Angeles, he was not really a receiver, that he could have more of a ceiling for that, more potential as a receiver? Uh, I think I think after training camp, um, I don't think there was any question in anyone's mind, including myself, that. Uh, that he could go in and be be a playmaker. Um, you know, he's a guy that really was a running back uh, going back to college and uh, in high school and college. Um, so his experience playing receiver, uh, particularly when we got him kind of in season in L.A. to, to be our punt returner, and he made a big difference uh, in that phase for us. So you kind of knew – his playmaking, playmaking ability, you knew what he could do with the ball in his hands. And then just that experience last year of him being able to really learn their system, play receiver more. He still got some carries, kind of the Debo Samuel type type stuff. Uh, he's a natural doing that from his experience. But, uh, but everyone, by the end of training camp, uh, really just no question he had a great camp and there was no question that he was going to be on this football team as a receiver. With Nick out, um, just how have you seen Jaron take on that role of knowing he's going to be the backup quarterback? He's Jaron's been great. Uh, Jaron really prepared that way. Uh, he, he's very mature. Uh, he studies. He wants. He wants to to kind of have ownership of everything we do. He studies the game plan. You know, and even. Uh, he he's a guy who's suited up for a football game, even when even when Nick was there. So um, you know they always say one play away. I mean he was two plays away, and I never saw anything from him except for preparing uh, as if that could possibly happen. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.